I've decided today to read to you an entire book of the Old Testament. Luckily, that book is Obadiah and it is the shortest book uh, in the Old Testament, coming it in at only a chapter long. Um, so it might be one that you have skipped over as you thumb through um, your Bible. One of those that is easy to uh, justify going to the contents section to be able to find it. Uh, but that's what we're going to hear today. We're going to reflect upon that and afterwards uh, we're going to end in prayer. Obadiah from the Good News Translation. This is the prophecy of Obadiah, what the sovereign Lord said about the nation of Edom. The Lord has sent his messenger to the nations, and we have heard his message. Get ready, let us go to war against Edom. The Lord says to Edom, I will make you weak, everyone will despise you, your pride has deceived you. Your capital is a fortress of solid rock. Your home is high in the mountains. And so you say to yourself, who can ever pull me down? Even though you make your home as high as an eagle's nests, so that it seems to be among the stars, yet I will pull it down. When thieves come at night, they take only what they want. When people gather grapes, they always leave a few. But your enemies have wiped you out completely. Descendants of Esau, your treasures have been looted. Your allies have deceived you. They have driven you from your country. People who were at peace with you have now conquered you. Those friends who ate with you have laid a trap for you. They say of you, where is all that cleverness he had? <clears throat> On the day I will punish Edom. I will destroy their clever men and wipe out all their wisdom. The fighting men of Taman will be terrified and every soldier in Edom will be killed. Because you robbed and killed your relatives, the descendants of Jacob. You will be destroyed and dishonoured forever. You stood aside on that day when enemies broke down their gates. You were as bad as those strangers who carried off Jerusalem's wealth and divided it among themselves. You should not have gloated over the misfortune of your relatives in Judah. You should not have given, been glad on the day of their ruin. You should not have laughed at them in their distress. You should not have entered the city of my people to gloat over their sufferings and to seize their riches. On the day of their disaster, you should not have stood at the crossroads to catch those trying to escape. You should not have handed them over to the enemy on the day of their distress. The day is near when I, the Lord, will judge all nations. Edom, what you have done will be done to you. You will get back what you have given. My people have drunk a bitter cup of punishment on my sacred hill. But all the surrounding nations will drink a still more bitter cup of punishment. They will drink it all and vanish away. But on Mount Zion, some will escape. And it will be a sacred place. The people of Jacob will possess the land that is theirs by right. The people of Jacob and of Joseph will be like fire. They will destroy the people of Esau as fire burns stubble. No descendant of Esau will survive. I, the Lord, have spoken. People from southern Judah will occupy Edom. Those from the western foothills will capture Philistia. Israelites will possess the territory of Ephraim and Samaria. The people of Benjamin will take Gilead. The army of exiles from northern Israel will return and conquer Phoenicia as far north as Zarephath. The exiles from Jerusalem who are in Sardis will capture the towns of southern Judah. The victorious men of Jerusalem will attack Edom and rule over it. And the Lord himself will be king. So there you have it, the full book of Obadiah and what a lengthy book that was. Due to its extreme uh, shortness, it's quite difficult to really know much about this. Again, if we bring up our little, um, our little chart here, we can see that Obadiah is one that I have put in two places, so one right at the top near where Solomon dies, 
Um, and then when Judah falls, I have thought Obadiah in again, and I've tried to make it slightly fainter, but still, <laughs> but still visible, because due to the fact that there is so little in the text, there's so little there, um, placing it is problematic. Like, how do you base when this is written? Um, so there are basically um, two opportunities where. Uh, Edom um, might have been understood to uh, be able to come to the rescue of Judah and uh, did not. And let's uh, be completely clear here, it's most likely uh, to be the later one, do you see, um, around 600, where Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar, the second I think, Nebuchadnezzar II, carries them off um, and Judah into exile. That is the most uh, likely one because they say that they profit from um, Judah and, uh, and the, the riches so that they come and loot basically. So it's most likely to be around that time. And we've seen, you know, why do they think? Uh, it just, if you think in ge geography, um, so you've got the northern, um, northern uh, province, the kingdom, which is um, Israel. Then you've got the southern, which is Judah, so Israel, Judah, and then underneath that would be Adam. So that's that's where they're situated. And I don't know if you noticed it in the text, but we have um, contained within Obadiah uh, the historical story for where the Edomites came from. They are Esau's. Uh, descendants. So Jacob and Esau, you remember that? Esau gave away his birthright and all, the, all that. The hairy one. Esau the hairy one. And Jacob the grasper. Uh, so, you know, that's that's where they, they come from. That's why you, you're like, well, you, we are kin. You know us. You know us. We are tribes. You should have come and helped, but instead uh, you, you did nothing. And, um, and this is what's happened. Uh, so, yeah, there we can see it. Um, in that that period uh, where the uh, Babylonian exile comes, and like you can see there, there's quite a big um, glut of different uh, prophets and different things speaking to that time. Because obviously, um, at the point where uh, Babylon takes them off into exile, um, it's a huge deal because that means that the entirety of the Jews have been taken away. They're all in exile. And that's a real big problem for uh, their understanding of who they are and uh, what they're doing. It can be difficult, I think, uh, to really understand uh, the significance of this for us today. You know, how do you, how do you get in? It's a very short book. Um, but the, the reason that I am particularly looking at where things are historically, because I, I do think there is a value in getting our heads around those sort of things. Um, this is the story of a people. Now, I, for one, don't find it helpful to think of um, God coming in and punishing the Edomites uh, for not helping uh, Judah, like the, that vengeful, I don't find that helpful. However, do I think that that is a reasonable um, interpretation, prayer, understanding of those people at that time? Uh, yeah, and I think we, we need to hear that. We need to hear their anger and frustration and that there's genuineness. The Bible is not fake. It's not, you know, glossing over different points of life. It, it, it really deals with the nitty gritty hard stuff that we face uh, in life. And so that's what I'm going to take uh, from this book uh, for me today. What did you take from it? As always, I would love to hear your thoughts. So let's have a word of prayer. God of us all, when we are hurting, it can be very easy um, to become only angry and frustrated. To wish things that might not really be in line uh, 
with your vision for the world. When we um, see Israel, we remember that these were a people who were searching and questioning, a people just like us. And we thank you, God, that the, the Bible represents real people who had real struggles and didn't get things exactly right. We pray that that might be an encouragement to us, that we are your people just as they were your people and we have a journey and we are going to develop and grow just the same way like that they did and with just the same God carrying us forward, inspiring us on and showing us the way. And it's the way of Jesus that we all uh, choose to follow. So in Jesus' name, we ask all these prayers. Amen.